Hello and welcome. I, I gotta tell you, I, I don't know how I feel about uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, number seven. This, I, this is one of those things, you know? It's like you come... Oh, man, my, my copy is totally cranked down here in this corner. Brutality. I didn't notice that till just now, so... Well, whatever. Whatever. Comic books get beat up, man. Diamond ships a man. There's so much handling. Uh, it's kind of amazing they arrived to us in decent condition at all. So we left off with uh, Elvira and that guy who I'm totally blanking on who he is, and it doesn't matter. Running into the Minotaur, and the Minotaur wants to eat her, and he's like, eh, and she's like, eh, and there's a lot of, eh. Right here. I, I really enjoyed this page. I thought it was pretty good, pretty inspired. Can you imagine, like, much that's just worse to get tormented by? Like, isn't this bad enough in real life? See it in the afterlife. Oh, hold on. We're... I jumped way ahead. So we're basically... Doing Dante's Inferno, the spoof with Elvira. And, uh... Yeah, you, you, you see... Exactly what's going on here. And I this is the best two-page spread in the book. There's one other bit in here I thought was really funny. One bit that's super cringy. And it's this one. Where they're mocking the uh the YouTube critic, the person who uh, you know, says, Hey, Last Jedi's not that great. In fact, they specifically call that out. I heard he had a seizure during a screening of The Last Jedi. His last words may or may not have been Mary Sue. I should know you were in heck. You belong here if only for that Elvira's Haunted Hills abomination. Now that's just darn rude. Apologize, worm. I'm not apologizing to a Minotaur who isn't half as cool as the one from Ray Harryhausen's classic Seventh Voyages and... They're basically making fun specifically of me. That's how I feel. And it's not funny. It's not a funny bit. This is wokeness to the highest degree. Like, there's a... You could do, like, the same exact bit, and it would be funny with some other kind of rage merchant. But specifically calling out, like, Last Jedi and stuff, like, they're aiming this joke to lampoon a specific kind of person. And not one just based on the fact that they're an outrage merchant, but one based on the politics of the person. And it's just not funny. Definite low point of the book. Uh, there's some other interesting bits that go on, and there's one really funny bit where they have to cross this lake of blood. Check out Vlad. Right there. Remember Dracula? Chasing Elvira around for like the first four issues? Well, there he is. Boiling in the lake of boiling blood. How are they going to get across? A griffin! How are you going to get a griffin to carry you somewhere? Cigarettes! Yeah. This is the my absolute favorite bit in this whole comic. It's the one that got kind of like that, oh, that's bad look, you know? As he explains, a prison is a prison. You know? Of course, cigarettes are the currency. So there's some interesting stuff in Elvira. Uh, I kind of highlighted the uh, highway traffic jam thing and the Griffin because those are like the best bits. There's some other little quips that she makes that are kind of funny. Uh, but that whole bit with uh, the YouTube outrage merchant guy stroked out from Last Jedi. Not funny. Not really funny. I could laugh more if he was more outrageous. Like, uh, if it was more than just The Last Jedi. But that's like the punchline of the joke is he died because of hating The Last Jedi. Like, that's the joke. You taste like Diet Mr. Pibb. Sad. Why would you drink Diet Mr. Pibb? Why would you drink Diet Mr. Pibb? Drink Diet Dr. Pepper. If you must. Anyway, you all have a great day. Um, I don't know if I can really recommend this. I just added this to my pool because I've bought like every other issue and now I'm seriously thinking about dropping it. So that that's my rambly opinion on Elvira 7. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.